Hey guys, how's it going today? Uh, what we're going to be working on today is solving the system of equations. So uh, if you notice right here, we have a system of equations. And we're going to be, uh, last time we used substitution, today we're going to be using elimination. Now, elimination is exactly like what it sounds like. Uh, you're trying to eliminate stuff so that uh, you can go ahead and uh, get it, reduce this down to one variable. So uh, this is going to be more of a, a problem that encompasses a lot. Uh, the reason we do that is because, uh, so you can see like a, a harder one, so you can start applying it for our next one. So like the other ones don't seem so intimidating. Uh, so I'm looking right here. And um, I want like, I can either make the 6 and the 5 opposites of each other, or I can make this uh, 3 and the 5 opposites of each other. So uh, I'm going to work with the 3 and the 5, make those opposites. Well, the lowest common multiple for those is going to be 15. So uh, how do I make a negative 3 to be a uh, 15? Well, I need to multiply this entire thing by 5. And then how can I make this negative 5 15? Uh, well, this one would be a negative 15, so I want to make this one a positive 15. Remember, you want them to be opposites. That's going to be like the big thing here, opposites. Um, so how can I make this a positive 15? Well, I can multiply it by a negative 3. So let's go ahead and do that, and let's uh, change out this problem a little bit. So if I multiply 6 by 5, I get 30x. And then if I multiply uh, negative 3 times 5, I'm going to get minus 15y, and then 3 times 5, I'm going to get 15. Now in my next one, I'm going to get 5 times a negative 3, that's going to get me minus 15. And then a negative 5 times a negative 3, two negatives make a positive, so that's going to be a positive 15. And then 10 times negative 3, that's negative 30. So notice how right here I got opposites. So what we want to do next is you want to combine um, straight up and down your your term. So 30x minus 15x, that gives me 15x. Negative 15y plus 15y, that cancels out. And that's exactly what we wanted to do, the elimination. And then uh, equals uh, 15 minus 30, that's going to give me negative 15. So I look at this, divide by 15, because I only have one variable left. And we're going to get x equals a negative 1. Well, once uh, you find x, it's just like substitution or graphing. Once you find x, then you go ahead, you plug it back in uh, to your next step. So uh, x equals negative 1. So, uh, you know, I can pick either the first equation or the second equation. Let's just do the first one because it's right there. 6 times a negative 1 minus 3y equals 3. And let's solve for this. So I get negative 6 minus 3y equals 3. Add 6 to both sides negative 3y equals 9, divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, y equals negative 3. 9 divided by negative 3 is negative 3. So remember to write this as a coordinate, negative 1 comma negative 3. Always go back and check. Remember, plug this into both parts. Uh, 6 times negative 1, that gets me negative 6. Uh, 3 times negative 3, that gets me minus a uh, plus 9, because negative 9, but the minus. So negative 6 plus 9, that's 3, that works. And then 5 times negative 1, that's negative 5. Minus 5 times negative 3, that's, this would make a negative 15, but the minus makes it plus 15. Negative 5 plus 15 is 10. That one also works. So that's how you use elimination. Uh, remember, you can multiply both of them by a number to get opposites. You can multiply just one of them if that's all that's necessary. Um, or you can multiply. Uh, you, you may not even need to multiply. It could already be set up for you. So let's jump over to this problem. And uh, if you're already looking at it, you might notice that, okay, it would make this really easy to make this opposites. The, so cancel out the x's. And so all I need to do is multiply the second one. Well, how do I make this the opposite of 20? Well, I just need to multiply 10 by negative 2. So we'll multiply it into all three of these. 10 times a negative 2 is negative 20x. 7.5 times a negative 2, that is uh, minus 15y. And 80 times a negative 2, that's minus 160. And I'm going to bring down this other one, put it right on top. So 20x 
plus 5y equals 120. Okay. Um, all right, so those are going to cancel out. 5 uh, minus 15, that gets me negative 10y. 120 minus 160 get, gets me negative 40. Divide by negative 10 on both sides because we have multiplication right here. So y equals 4. And once you get what 1 is, you go ahead and you plug it back in to, it doesn't matter which one. Well, I don't like working with decimals, so we're going to plug it into the first one. So 20x plus 5 times 4 equals 120. So 20x plus 20 equals 120. Uh, subtract 20 on both sides. So we get 20x left equals 120 minus 20. That's going to give me 100. And I see multiplication happening, so I'm going to divide by 20. x equals 100 divided by 20 is 5. Remember, write it as a coordinate, 5, comma, 4. And go ahead and check your answer. So uh, 20 times 5, that's 100. Uh, 5 times 4, that's 20. So 100 plus 20, that's 120. Works. 10 times 5, uh, that's 50. Uh, 7.5 times 4, that's 30. Add them, and you get 80. That one works too. All right. Right here, uh, we, we kind of see something different. The reason why I want to look at this one is because uh, you might just be tempted to, to just go at it and, and uh, you know, put, put it so like, you know, there's two Y already cancel out the Y's. But you want them to be right underneath each other. So I want the X in front here. So I want to subtract 4X. Subtract 4X. So I'm going to get a negative 4X plus 8Y equals 0 because there's nothing left over here. So I, uh, that zero needs to still be a placeholder on the other side. All right, so now that I have that uh, changed in a way where I can use it, I'm going to move this down a little bit. Um, I want to bring down the, the, the first one that I have. So I'm going to write a 7x plus 2y equals y equals negative 8. So again, we have to use elimination. Uh, again, substitution, if you're, if you're really comfortable with substitution, go ahead and uh, use substitution. But, uh, you know, I'm uh, looking at this problem. Elimination might work out. And go ahead and pause it right here if you feel comfortable. But, you know, if you're still chugging along with us, go ahead, chug along with us. So I, I want, I know I can multiply 2 to get 8, but I want it to be opposite. So I have to multiply this one by, well, 2 times 4 gets me 8, but I want it to be opposite. So I want to multiply by a negative 4. That's not minus 4. That's multiply by a negative 4. Um, so here we're going to get a 7x. Nope. Forgot to multiply that one by negative 4. So 7 times negative 4 is negative 28x. 2 times negative 4, that's negative 8y. Equals negative 8 times negative 4, that's 32. Go straight down, I get negative 32x. Uh, those cancel out, bring down my equal sign. 0 plus 32, that is a 32. Solve for x by divide, I see multiplication, divide by negative 32. Divide by negative 32. That cancels out, I get x. Sorry, that doesn't cancel out, that's, that equals 1. Um, and then 32 divided by negative 32, that's a negative 1. So we have our x. Your next step is to go ahead and plug it back in. So, uh, you know, I'm going to plug it back into the second one because that's going to be really quick. 8y equals 4 times negative 1. So 8y equals negative 4. Divide by 8. That equals 1. So I'm left with y equals negative 1 half. Simplify that. And then... Remember, always write as a coordinate, negative 1, comma, negative 1 half. All right, we got a couple more. Let's take a look at this problem. Go ahead and start this problem out if you're, if you're comfortable doing so. Um, but, you know, if I wanted to cancel out my M's here, I noticed, like, okay, those ones don't fit really nice. So, um, 
I have to multiply this one by a, well, let's see, 6 is what's going to be common. So I can multiply 2 times 3, and then 3 times a negative 2 because I want it to be opposite. So in our first one, we distribute. We're going to get 6m plus 3 times 4 that gives me 12n equals 3 times 10, that's 30. And then negative 2 uh, in our second one, negative 2 times 3m, that's negative 6m. Negative 2 times a 5, that's negative 10n. And negative 2 times 11, that's negative 22. So combine them, those cancel out. 12 minus 10, that's 2n, equals uh, 30 minus 22 is 8. Divide by 2 to solve for n. Sorry, that's a 2. We get n equals 4. And go ahead, you want to plug it back in here. So, uh, you know, I just tend to do the first one, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, so 2m plus 4 times 4 equals 10. 2m plus 16 equals 10. Subtract 16 on both sides. We get 2m equals 10 minus 16, that's negative 6. And then you divide by 2. That is 1. So I'm left with m equals negative 3. So always remember to write it as a coordinate. Uh, so m comes first, so I'll say like uh, that's going to be my x or whatever. So negative 3 comma 4. And this would be m, that would be n. And uh, let's go back and check. Negative 3 times 2, that's negative 6. Uh, 4 times 4, that's 16. So negative 6 plus 16 is 10. That works. All right, 3 times negative 3 here, um, that's going to get me negative 9. 5 times 4, that's going to get me 20. Negative 9 plus 20, that is 11. So that one works. We got one more coming up, our last one. Uh, so this one's a word problem, and it says a student took 60 minutes to answer a combination of 20 multiple choice and extended response questions. She took two minutes to answer each multiple choice question and six minutes to answer each extended response question. Okay. So our first part says write a system of equations to model the relationship between the number of multiple choice questions M and the number of extended response questions R. Um, all right, so multiple choice questions are M and the extended response questions are R. So we want to model that. Uh, so we know that there are 20 multiple choice um, and extended response questions. So we know that M plus R is going to give us 20. So the number of multiple choice plus the number of extended response questions are going to give us 20. Um, so we also know that it's going to take two minutes for each multiple choice and uh, six minutes for the extended responses. So it's two minutes for a multiple choice plus six minutes for the extended responses. And we know that it took 60 minutes to do all of this. So it's going to equal 60. All right. And now that is going to be our system. So if we're looking here, this is going to be part A. Now, when it says how many of each type of question, basically we want to know the numbers for M and R. Um, so using our, our system, we have two variables, two equations. We're going to be able to, to do that. Um, I want to actually take this back to our last video where we're working on substitution because substitution would actually look, work really nicely here. So if we notice the M plus R equals 20, uh, let's just subtract R on so both sides. So M equals 20 minus R or negative R plus 20, doesn't matter. And let's substitute it into our first one. So uh, 2 times 20 minus R plus 6R equals 60. We're going to have uh, 40 minus 2R. Sorry, someone just walked in on me. It's all right, though. 40 minus 2R and then plus 6R. That's going to equal 60. Um, so combine my R's, I get 40 minus 
sorry, plus 4R equals 60, subtract 40, subtract 40. So we get 4R equals uh, 60 minus 40, that gives me 20, divide by 4, divide by 4, R equals 5. So the number of extended response questions we know is going to be 5, all right? And then, uh, so M plus 5 equals 20. Just go ahead and plug the 5 in for the R here. Uh, subtract 5 on both sides. If you haven't just done it mental math already, we know that the number of multiple choice questions is going to equal 15. So uh, we know there are 5 extended response questions on the test and 15 multiple choice. Uh, let's kind of go back. Let's do the same problem. Uh, keep our same system, but let look. Let's look at uh, doing this with elimination. So if I do this with elimination, um, let's go ahead. I know, like, I want to make this opposite, so I'm going to multiply this one by a negative two. So I get negative two m, and then um, a negative two r minus two r minus forty combine everything those cancel out and we get 4r equals 60 minus 40 that's 20. So it looks like it got us there a lot faster um, than substitution and and that's what that's why elimination uh, is a little bit more powerful in a lot of in, in some cases. Uh, so divide by 4 on both sides we get r equals 20 divided by 4 is 5 again that's exactly what we found using substitution and uh, we can go ahead and plug it back into the original. So m plus 5 equals 20. Exactly the way we did it earlier. Minus 5, minus 5, m equals 15. So that's kind of like an extended look at this problem. Uh, you can choose which way you want to do these problems. You know, whether that's going to be substitution or elimination. Or if you really like graphing and working on the calculator, go ahead and graph them. Uh, work it out on the calculator. Uh, but you have all of these tools to solve systems. Do it in the way that you feel most comfortable. Uh, for myself, that's going to be substitution. I think substitution is going to be flawless every single time. But a lot of people really enjoy elimination just because it seems a little bit faster. Uh, but again, you do you. If you need any help, just let me know. My name is Mr. Hernandez, and I'm always here to help.